dissolved air flotation, or DAF, or DAF, is the exact opposite. Uh, we're trying to get things to float. Uh, as a treatment technology, uh, dissolved air flotation has been around uh, a long time, at least 50 years. It's not as old as a technology as gravity clarification, but it is fairly mature. It is uh, most commonly recognized as a pretreatment of the for the removal of suspended solids and oils and greases from industrial wastewater, but is also used for secondary clarification and thickening of biological solids, and as a tertiary treatment for the removal of algae and phosphorus and many final discharges. The main principle of dissolved air flotation is the creation and controlled release of fine air bubbles which attach to contaminant particles that rise within a flotation cell or tank for removal. Now, DAF systems come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Um, they can be circular or rectangular. This is a rectangular unit here. And they can be shallow or deep. Some systems have plate packs, some do not. Uh, regardless, they all possess the same basic features. First, there is a contact chamber, which is where the um, influent comes in with the contaminant particles and they make contact with the fine air bubbles that are being introduced into the contact chamber with wastewater. Um, that's where the majority of the attachment takes place between the particle and the air bubble. Next, there is a flotation cell, which is the uh, surface area within the tank uh, where the bubble particle matrix will float to the surface and uh, form a float layer on, on the surface. To remove that material that's floating on the surface, there is a skimmer system. In this case, it's a, a ch flat and chain system that pulls the material across the surface of the water, drops it off into a hopper, and from there it's pumped for either dewatering or uh, disposal. Contrary to popular belief, not everything floats. Lots of things will settle. Um, so there is, uh, DAFs have a mechanism, either a hopper in the bottom with drain ports, or in this case, we're showing an auger that pulls the material as it settles to the bottom. It pulls the material to the uh, front end of the DAF, and then it's being discharged through a port and a blowdown scheme. Now, once the, the solids have settled and the, the solids have floated, hopefully more floating than settling, um, there has to be a means of separating that clarified effluent from those solids. And there's a baffle system within the DAF that um, carries the flow uh, around through an effluent uh, weir system and then for discharge of the clarified effluent uh, for direct discharge or uh, further treatment downstream. And all DAF systems have a, um, a means of introducing uh, air into water. Um, basically, it's being forced into solution with the water and uh, releases the air in the form of fine bubbles into the wastewater stream. Uh, because of the white color imparted by the fine bubbles into the water, we call this a white water system. Uh, illustrated here is a recycled whitewater system that uses the clarified effluent exiting the DAF as the solution stream. And that as that white water is being generated uh, by the pump uh, and the air injection, the, uh, it's being introduced uh, into the contact chamber where it makes contact with the influent solids uh, coming in. So the key feature of any DAF is the whitewater system, uh, which uses pressure and mixing energy to force air into solution with water, uh, typically, as demonstrated earlier, a, a recycle stream from the DAF effluent. The key takeaway from this slide is that air solubility in water is affected by both pressure and temperature. The amount of air that goes into solution is directly proportional to the pressure exerted on the solution. Um, the higher the pressure, the more air that goes into solution, basically. Um, this pressure is provided by a recycle pump 
which operates somewhere between 50 and 100 PSI. Also, as you see in this slide, the uh, wastewater temperature also plays a role in how much air goes into a solution. Uh, the higher the temperature, the lower the solubility of air and, and water. So when white water is injected into the contact chamber of the DAF, the, the pressure uh, rapidly changes from something like 100 PSI down to just a few PSI. And that releases the air in the form of those very fine bubbles, or white water. Um, and th those bubbles are typically in the 10 to 100 micron diameter range. The size of the bubbles is important since on a mass basis, smaller bubbles provide more surface area for particle attachment. Also, larger bubbles can rise too rapidly to the surface, uh, detaching from the particle and causing agitation on the surface, which is not good from a flotation standpoint. So it's really important that the white water system generates and releases only fine bubbles into the contact chamber of the DAF unit. There are basically two different types of white water systems. The more traditional involves uh, pumping through a tank and injecting air, compressed air, under pressure. Uh, this requires a compressed air supply and a fairly large pressurization tank, uh, usually greater than a minute of retention time. Uh, these systems tend to operate in a, in a lower uh, pressure range of 50 to 60 PSI, so the saturation efficiencies tend to be lower. However, over the last 20 years, uh, many manufacturers, including Avoqua, have shifted to air handling or DAF pumps, like the uh, Evoqua Hellbender pump illustrated here, where air and water are combined uh, together as they go through the pump and due to, to the mechanical energy of the pump and the higher operating pressures, which are typically around 100 PSI, these pumps tend to produce higher saturation efficiencies. So with those higher saturation efficiencies, these systems require a lower recycle flow rate to produce the same amount of dissolved air compared to a more traditional system. Um, so there is uh, that Increased saturation efficiency allows for a lower recycle rate, which means there's a lesser hydraulic load on the on the DAF system, which makes the DAF smaller. Um, these uh, DAF pumps can also use ambient air uh, drawn into the pump, which removes the the need for a compressed air supply. Now, there, there are a number of design conditions uh, to consider when uh, looking at a DAF application, um, but the, the, the major ones are these. Um, hydraulic loading rate, or HLR, solids loading rate, or SLR, or the air-solids ratio. Um, the hydraulic loading rate is the, uh, basically the incoming wastewater flow in gallons per minute divided by the surface area of the DAF, which is the length and the width of the, of the flotation cell uh, in square feet. So most DAFs operate within a range of one to five gallons per minute per square foot of surface area. The solids loading rate is calculated similarly by dividing the solids mass of the uh, suspended solids and oil and grease coming into the unit well, through the incoming flow uh, in pounds per hour by the, by the DAF surface area. Um, DAFs typically operate within a range of two to twenty gallons, um, two to twenty pounds of uh, solids per square foot per hour. Lastly, we have the air-solids ratio, which is the mass of air provided by the white water system relative to the mass of solids entering the, the in, entering the DAF with the incoming flow. The range for that is usually in the range of 0.005 to 0.05 pounds of air per pound of solids. Now, as you can see, there's a great deal of variability in these design criteria, and it's due to a wide variety of reasons, um, which include the type of wastewater that's being treated, the treatment targets, what kind of effluent quality is required, and whether or not chemical conditioning is used or, or, or is a um, 
a coagulant required and a polymer uh, for uh, flocculation, coagulation, flocculation. All of those play a role in establishing the, the sizing of, of, a, of a DAF unit. Some, can, um, some contaminants like uh, petroleum and animal fats and vegetable oils uh, flow quite easily with or without the dissolved air. Other contaminants like biological solids and paper mill fines can settle, but also easily float with dissolved air and some chemical conditioning. Um, even metal contaminants like zinc and nickel can be removed through DAF when chemical conditioning is used. In short, the, the sizing of a DAF depends heavily on the application. So let's take a look at some of these applications. Um, as mentioned earlier, the most common application is for the removal of suspended solids and oil and grease to meet a sewer discharge limit. Um, a lot of DAFs go in uh, to industrial facilities like uh, meat and poultry plants, food, food facilities, laundries, things of that sort, simply to meet sewer discharge limits on oil and grease. Um, in other applications, uh, DAF is used to recover material for beneficial use, like removing uh, chicken fat from poultry processing wastewater for use in animal feed, or removing contaminants from a, from a natural gas uh, fracking facility to generate water for reuse. Uh, flotation is also becoming more commonly used for uh, clarification of biological solids, like those coming from a, an activated sludge system or a moving bed a biological reactor or just an aerated pond effluent, and even anaerobic systems where uh, uh, clarification of biological solids is necessary for effluent quality downstream. In recent years, we've been seeing a lot more applications for tertiary treatment um, where phosphorus removal is important. Um, even DAF systems going downstream of membranes where phosphorus removal uh, can only be accomplished through tertiary uh, treatment using a DAF. Um, and uh, in small municipalities and large industries where uh, there may be large lagoons and algae is a problem and algae removal is required using, using a DAF technology. What I've shown here is an example of a, a DAF system at a processed food facility in Texas. Um, the effluent from the plant uh, comes uh, through a, a lift station, goes over a screen for removing uh, trash and heavy uh, solids from the plant. And then it is uh, transferred to an equalization tank where the uh, contaminant load and the flow is equalized prior to treatment. This is also where pH control is affected, where they control the pH to, uh, to facilitate better uh, uh, flocculation downstream in the DAF. Uh, flow comes from the equalization tank, goes over through the flocculation tube, where a coagulant is added uh, in addition to a polymer uh, to flocculate the particles before entering the DAF. And, that, and within the DAF, that's where the flotation occurs and the float material is removed. Uh, it's uh, taken over uh, to a solid storage facility where uh, the solids can be decanted, free water can be decanted from the, the, those storage tanks, and the um, solids are then taken away um, for reuse at a local rendering facility. The effluent from the DAF then passes uh, through a um, pH monitoring and control system to keep the pH within the permit limits um, of the municipality, and then it's discharged uh, to the city sewer. Um, this is the uh, performance of results of this particular facility in Texas. Um, the TSS and oil and grease concentrations coming out are fairly typical. Uh, TSS is less than 100 milligrams per liter, and the oil and grease is less than 20. And the removals um, are uh, quite high in this in this instance because of both the high TSS and oil and grease concentrations, um, but the removal percentages are typically uh, greater than 90% for either suspended solids or oil and grease. In this particular case, um, 
The BOD removals are also quite high um, at 80%. I wouldn't consider that typical, but in this case, it's, it's, it's occurring simply because the suspended solids in oil and grease make up a majority of the BOD concentration within the wastewater. So the question gets down to, so how do you know how to size a DAF? Mostly it involves um, uh, applying the design criteria we mentioned earlier, like hydraulic loading and solids loading and the air-solids ratio for a specific application. Um, for example, a DAF at a poultry pot processing plant may have a solids loading rate of 8 to 10 pounds per square foot per hour. But for algae removal, you may require a loading rate of only two. So in, in most cases, bin scale testing or pilot testing is used to determine DAF sizing and performance. In other cases, industries or municipalities may lease a DAF system to determine effectiveness and provide temporary treatment while a permanent system is designed and fabricated. Most of the rentals from uh, Evoqua's DAF fleet is used in this manner. It uh, basically, a DAF goes in to um, demonstrate the um, uh, the performance and the design uh, of a, a permanent system, and then as the permanent system is being designed and uh, fabricated, then the, the DAF remains in place until it's until it's ready for installation. So, in closing, um, DAF is a, a very versatile uh, uh, technology. It's it's mature, but it is very versatile. It's it's used in a wide range of applications within the. Um, Within the uh, within the industrial and municipal applications. <clears throat>